compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it. He who doesn't, pays it. Albert Einstein. All right, today I wanna to talk to you guys about how to invest in the stock market. A very basic level on what drives it, who drives it, why you should get in, some basic fundamentals of trading, right? So, um, what controls the stock market? You need to know that profit, companies profit, so as you look at, at quarterly earnings and you see that a company ha was profitable by X amount, uh, how does that compare to last quarter's earnings? How does that compare to that same quarter a year prior or two years prior? And number two is potential growth in the future. So if a company was, uh, you know, in a startup phase, are there projections of, of growth and profitability getting better? So even companies that are actually losing money early on could be worth a lot of money and their stock price might be really high because it's based on their future projections. Do they have some niche, some um, product or service that, that they are the you know, clear leader on? If, if yes, their stock price might be high because the future looks bright, right? So profit and potential growth. Now Warren Buffett actually says, you know, is there also a moat around the company? So in his own strategy, he's looking for companies that have a certain amount of like um, security or, or have established such um, market share, like stronghold, that it's very difficult for competitors to sort of take them down. And so he calls it a moat. So that's one of his things, but really the two big drivers is, is profitability and future profits, right? Trying to project that out. So who controls the market? The market is really controlled by the people with the big money. <laughs> so the big dogs on Wall Street that have, you know, big time connections to these companies they're looking into and they're trying to invest in, they maybe even <clears throat> are connecting different companies to sort of create new opportunity, etc. The real thing is the big money. So hedge fund managers, these people that have massive funds, uh, they might have m hundreds of millions billions or in some cases even trillions of dollars under management for you know wealthy people wealthy companies etc they're taking all this money that is sort of a cash that that these wealthy companies and people don't need right now and so then you give it to these fund managers to manage that money and turn it into more profit while we don't need it in our own business or in our own lives, right? And so some of these, as I've talked about many times, Ray Dalio, he, start, he started Bridgewater. It's an investment company that has returned more, more uh, profit to its clients than any investing company in the world or in history. And so they're considered the most successful uh, investors ever. And so they literally, I think their their funds under management exceed a trillion dollars. I, I could be wrong on that, but it's something insane. It's a crazy amount of money. So you think about the amount of money that they are trading versus like a small guy like, like me or yourself. Um, even if you're a multimillionaire, you're small beans compared to these fund managers, right? So... The big dogs with big money, they control the, the market much more than the rest of us, right? We have our little trades here and there, but if, if you've spent any time watching a, a live stock ticker, uh, you know, I remember years ago when I would do that basically all day, every day, and I would sit there and watch the live tickers, and I would make a trade, you know, I'd buy eight shares or 10 shares or 20 shares of Apple, you know, it might be a, a few thousand dollars or whatever. And, uh, and then the next trade would be $20 million, $40 million, $10 million. 
obviously these are these are people with real money right so my 10 shares in the middle of those you know thousands or hundred tens of thousands of shares being traded didn't affect the price much and you got to realize that okay the people controlling the price are not only people that have more money than me but they have far more resources connections and experience in this world than me and there's no way that that you and I are just gonna like outsmart them so they they pretty much have the you know the best information possible in fact Ray Dalio again Bridgewater they have what they call a meritocracy so they have they have thousands of employees I think like 1500 employees something like that um, and they basically rate one another and so when it comes to making decisions, they know who has basically been rated as like most qualified on any given topic. And so when they go to make business decisions, those people who have most authority um, or, or most you know merit have the most authority in making the decision. And so how could I, my own, you know, me working, you know, primarily in healthcare for most of my career, compete with that type of a, an organization in trying to outsmart the market. I'm not going to. So in my opinion, it's more of a, if you can't beat them, join them type game. Now you might get lucky on a few things here and there. You might be able to quickly make a trade where you made a lot of money hitting a peak or a valley or, you know, and, and getting out ahead as one of my videos is how I made you know ten thousand dollars in one day it was essentially that I got lucky I saw something happening it's patterns I recognized I made the trade you know by 10 o'clock I hit I was up like eleven thousand five hundred dollars um, my initial investment was a seven thousand dollar investment profited over eleven grand in one day and um, so those are possible, but they're not likely and they're not frequent enough. It's not a guarantee, right? But what is a guarantee basically is that the stock market's going to go up over time and that you want to be in on that. <laughs> and so you've got to kind of play the long game. You want to be in so that as these guys are pushing this price up, you get, you get to reap the rewards, okay? So that's who and, and what controls the stock market. Um, you got to realize kind of your, your place compared to these guys. Uh, when it comes to analyzing the market, you want to pick some very simple things. Um, as, as I mentioned in another YouTube video, uh, I think it was a book review on Profits Run, uh, an investing book. He basically says, you know, a lot of people that, that really start trying to dig in and figure out what, what the next big thing is. And there's so much information that you could, you could go, you know, searching out that most people get paralysis by analysis, basically saying that there is far too much information to look at it all <clears throat> so you're better off finding some a handful of basic indicators and comparing all companies by that standard so pick a standard and then compare your companies by that your analysis by going deeper you know your chances of, of really being ahead of the game are just not that great and and after a while you're you don't even know who you're comparing against what because there's so many things in fact, I prefer to just rely on the analysis of also the big dogs. <clears throat> Maybe they're different big dogs, but if you look on, like I use TD Ameritrade, you look on there and you click on a stock and you go to uh, ratings and all these different companies that basically rate stocks. Um, they show you what their analysis is. It's, you know, I mean, it's, typically like a star rating kind of thing or you know a, a, a short or long 
um, a buy or sell or whatever and so you kind of you can kind of think of it as like red green yellow sort of thing and so it's like all these different companies will anal analyze these stocks and they're huge companies with tons of analysis and things and they use different metrics so when you get like six different companies that all rate a stock positive and you know that they use different metrics that's a good indication that that's a good stock to buy right since um, using multiple different metrics these this company seems to be positive by all these companies it's it's a good a good buy um, and there's no way that my analysis will be better than theirs and so I think that's a that's a good indicator to look at what are the ratings that are already built into the you know trading platforms what do they say so profits future growth ratings take a look at it does it look good if yes it's a stock to buy so you can count on the market dropping near 10% at any given time on any given year it's usually considered a correction um, and and, I'll, and sometimes it overcorrects and then it'll make a quick recovery but you can just expect at some point in the in the year the stocks will be higher than they should be and at some point they'll correct and maybe even go lower than they should be but over time you're going to get about a 10% return too. So when when your stocks crash, I'm not saying if, I'm saying when your stocks crash by, you know, 10%-ish in a single year, don't freak out. That's normal. We've seen that before. We in fact, we've seen it every year basically. So don't freak out. You can expect a 10% drop at some point in the game this year and then it'll come back. Okay, so don't freak out. You can also anticipate to get an annual growth of about 10% over time. Okay, this year you might not get 10%, but if you stay in for five or 10 years, you'll get an annual return of 10%. Okay, and then you can also expect a recession every three to five years about. And what I mean by a recession is that the stock market actually had a negative, um, you, you lost money. <laughs> but once again, over time, you'll get about 10% return annually. So if you do have a down year, the likelihood of the next year or maybe two years later being beyond 10%, maybe closer to like 15, 18, 20% gains is very good. Um, but it's so unpredictable you know, I, I know that the fact that I said that, you're gonna go, well, if I ever see the market go down, then I'm gonna triple my triple my money in there and it's gonna go up by 20% and then I'll just wait for the next recession. But <clears throat> it's so unpredictable, you cannot time it very well. You might get lucky sometimes, but not consistently. And so like, like <laughs> I remember a few years ago, you know, the 2008 crash just, just devastated a lot of people and industries and then um, it it made this big strong recovery and everyone was expecting a second crash <laughs> and it never crashed really significantly for an entire decade and and so a few years ago you know Warren Buffett basically said all those people that are waiting for that crash have missed out on 250 percent return <laughs> And, and it was true. It was true. If you were waiting for that crash, you were still waiting. And at best, even if it fell like, you know, I mean, 20% or something, you still weren't going to buy cheaper than, you know, back eight years ago or whatever. So you're waiting for that crash. And in the meantime, you're missing out on 250% returns. You might want to just get in. And get in for the long term okay so a couple reasons why you want to play the long game number one you can't really guess the market nobody can you might see some you know you'll I mean you see it all over the 
news and 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 stock traders and all this stuff. That They're all trying to be prophetic and act like they know what's going to happen, but no one actually does. <laughs> and so you got to get in and, and so that you don't miss on the gains. And um, and always basically be a buyer if you're young. If you're not close to retirement, you're always a buyer. So when a stock market, the stock market crashes, hey, that's not a bad thing. You can buy low. You're buying stocks on sale, and a lot of times after a big crash, there's a quick recovery, and so you're, um, you know, you're able to buy stocks at a low point, equivalent to maybe a couple years before, and then you get those trend, you know, that quick recovery, and your trend line is on back on pace, but you got to buy low, so you just keep buying, buy, 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 and you'll cost average. Um, which will basically be a buffer against both the big ups and the big downs, and you'll just get somewhere in the middle, and you'll gain the returns uh, that we all enjoy. All right, so that's number one. Uh, you can't guess it. Number two is <clears throat> tax reasons. If I sell my, you know, and I'm trying to take my profits and like realize those gains, I have to pay capital gains taxes on those. But if I never sell and I have you know, unrealized gains, well, those unrealized gains can make profit the next year. And those unrealized gains can make profit the next year and the next year. And all the while, I haven't paid any taxes on capital gains. And then in the end, when I retire and I'm starting to pull money and things like that, I'll, I'll pay capital gains on the money that I withdraw. But I would have lost 15% a year if I was selling every year and then reinvesting. So you basically get to avoid paying taxes. You get to defer it, kick the can down the road and make profit on your money now and and then you know pay those taxes when, when you have to. So that's a second reason. And uh, the third reason is, <laughs> that like you cannot outsmart the pros on a consistent basis so if you can't beat them join them uh warren buffett says he has a quote something along the lines of the stock market is a device to transfer money from the impatient to the patient <laughs> Meaning, if you if you're a you're a day trader or you want, you're looking for the big wins, you're basically giving your money to people that are not doing that. <laughs> so, stick to it, stay in. Um, here's an interesting idea. Jim Rohn, um, love listening to Jim Rohn, and he says he, he was given a talk on finances and things and, and economics and whatever. It's worth a listen, but I don't even know the name of the video, but he says, you know, he's like, could you triple your income? Could you, could you double, triple five times? Could you 10 times your income? You know, and a lot of people hear that and the reaction is like, no, I've, I've worked 20 years to get to this decent income. I don't know that I can just, you know, 10 X my income. Well, the stock market is kind of the way that you can double or triple your income, right? So I wrote down some numbers here, so, so check this out. I view the stock market as an opportunity to give myself a raise annually despite what my company does, right? So let's just take two people. Let's just take you and me, for example. That'll keep it easy. You and I have the same job with the same income, and every year we get a zero to 2% annual raise. We never get promoted, we just kind of stick with it and we do it for, for 30 years, right? Some years when, when, when the economy's bad, they give us knowing, no raise. When the economy's going good, they give us a two to 3% raise. Let's just say that. Pretty standard, right? Well. You spend your money, you do your thing. I do too, except for $5,000 a year, I invest in the stock market and I get 10% return. So basically after one year, you know, I make pretty much 500 bucks and so I have $5,500. 
Well, most people see that and they go, oh, I only made $500 off of five grand in, in an entire year. So not too sexy, not all that great, right? It's not like you're not gonna go buy a new car because you made 500 bucks. I mean, that pays a piece of your mortgage at best. Well, year two, I had another five grand, plus I had the 500 I made, plus the five grand from the year before, so now I'm at $10,500. Well, at the end of this year, I make $1,500. Eh, that's neat, right? It's not, not exceptional, but remember, I made, I made $1,500 more than you, even though we have the same in, you know, salary. Year three happens again, compound it all together, right? I make about $1,700 more than you. <laughs> um, year 15, let's stretch it out. So this is where I actually whipped out the real compound calculator. Year 15, I have 174,748, okay? And then year 16, 197,323. So the difference between those two years is 22,975 minus the five grand that I contributed. I made $17,975 more than you, right? Let's stretch it out to year 29 to 30. So in 20, year 29, I have 817 grand. Year 30, it goes up to 904,000. So take the difference between those two years. I made $87,000 minus the five grand. I made $82,247 more than you. So if, if our salary was 80 grand, you know, after 30 years or whatever, I made more than twice as much as you <laughs> in that single year, right? So. The investment is sort of my raise that I give myself, but it's also the way to get the, you know, the compounding effect of my income, right? I now make as much on my investment as I do at work. And that's off of five grand a year. I hope you can put more than that in it, and it all depends on your income level, your cost of living, all that all that stuff. But you know, if you most most financial advisors recommend you put in 10 to 15 percent of your income annually into the into the stock market, into some sort of investment. Usually, an employer you know plan account or whatever. But what I do is I max out my employer account, and then I um, put another you know chunk of money every every week I have automatic deposits going into my my personally managed stock market account so I have multiple different funds growing for me I shoot for about 20 percent of my income to be invested so I think that um, is a, a super good strategy and um, those it kind of shows you how it's a compounding effect and and so even if I'm not capable of going out and get a getting a job that you know dramatically increases my income or becoming some fantastic speaker that people will pay to see or start a business that exponentially grows my income I still have the ability to double my income just by putting you know five to ten thousand a year away uh, and over time my income gets bigger and bigger and bigger <clears throat> so a couple things uh, before I wrap this up, I do have a couple videos. Well, I have a lot of videos on YouTube that you may want to refer to. So one of them is called um, Most Common Stock Market Mistakes and uh, essentially goes through a few things of, of like the emotions of the stock market and where rookies screw up a lot. Uh, and then another one is for basically right now, it's called COVID-19 Stock Market Recession and how the stock market reacted to that and where people are putting their money. How is it that in a year that the average of the stock market is, it's barely getting back to it about its its 52 week high. So if you don't know what that means, the stock market's going up, it's hitting a new high, new high, new high, 
the highest it's been in 52 weeks, right? Well, then COVID happened and it dropped and it's coming back. So the high's still here and it's finally getting back up to its 52 week high. Um, how in that scenario am I up over 20%? It's because people are dumping their money in places where it will be most safe in a recession. So in this scenario where everybody's basically told to go home and stay home, uh, certain industries went crazy, right? So online shopping, gaming, um, video conferencing services, things that support businesses being remote, etc. Those industries are the most safe they might even take a dip in their actual profitability, but they're the most safe in this economy. And so the fact that I had had a fair amount of that type of stock went through the roof. Go look, go take a look at like Amazon or Walmart, uh, not Walmart, uh, Microsoft or Nvidia, a ga gaming platform or uh, Five Nine, I think it's called. There's a whole bunch of them. So Software-based companies that support businesses, their stocks went went crazy in a con in a in a rough economy. It's the place where it's most safe. So go check out those videos. Most common stock market mistakes, COVID-19 stock market uh, recession. So those are two 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 of my videos you can easily find. Um, I have a whole playlist called stock stock market. So that might be a good place to start if you're new new to the stock market. So just to recap a little bit, uh, who controls the stock market? The big dogs with all the money, right? The people with hundreds of millions or billions of dollars under management, they're controlling the price. What controls the price? The profits and future profitability. So we're looking for companies that are making profit this year and will make more profit in the future. Pick some basic metrics to compare your stocks to, to one another. Don't get too crazy. Don't become par par paralyzed with analysis. Um, you can count on a 10% you know, decline at any time in any given year, but it usually will, will correct and, and get back on track. You can count on a short recession every three to five years. You'll lose money sometimes, but it comes back. You can count on an average annual growth of 10% annually over time. That's basically the average of the stock markets. What we, when we say the average and, and, and like sort of that standard growth, we're usually referring to the massive index funds like the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, et cetera. So those big conglomerate um, index funds that, that take into account a lot of America's biggest companies. <clears throat> And, and other war, other countries have their own indexes too. So you can look into that kind of stuff, but that's what we're typically referring to. Only invest your money, only invest money that you can afford to lose. I don't think I even hit on this, did I? You do not want to make it more emotional than it already is, okay? And secondly, you don't wanna put yourself in a desperate situation. So don't invest money that you can't afford to live without. It's very important, very important. Don't invest money that you can't afford to live without, okay? Um, play the long game. And lastly, like, you cannot afford not to be in the stock market. Like, you don't want to get to, you know, l later in life, retirement age, um, start having, you know, health problems as we all do. Nobody gets out of here alive. So you don't want to get to that stage in life where you need money and don't have the ability to earn it and not have it. Get in the stock market, allow your money to work for you and make you more money. It's such a critical thing. Put your money in the stock market real estate and like stocks aren't the only place to invest either there's plenty of other opportunities this is just one that i know and i feel like is a secure thing the more you learn about any industry the safer it becomes right the less risk so get in so that you can learn the nuances you can learn to control your emotions around it <clears throat> you can just begin to experience the growth and, and exponential payoffs that you'll get 
So I did I did put a few um, affiliates on a, on my website. So if you're you know kind of new and you're not sure what to do with the stock market, you don't know what your first pick should be, your first buy, whatever. I threw a couple affiliates where they they'll coach you, they'll give you like. Um, stock recommendations weekly, what to buy, what to sell, you know, these professionals that actually um, have made a career out of, of trading stocks. And so if you go to bronsonwilkes.com forward slash stock market coach, you can find a couple options there um, and maybe they can help you out. So if you liked this video, Please hit subscribe, um, mash that like button, comment below if this was helpful. I want to hear, you know, what are your best picks if you're already in the stock market, what insight from this video was helpful, and uh, other questions you might have about the stock market that I could possibly answer for you. But uh, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll talk to you on the next one.